Hello everyone. Okay, we are going to do a quick review of uh, pacing. So we have our patient here. I'm going to switch to lead two uh, for this gentleman. So we'll say uh, what we have here is a patient awake, alert, oriented, complaining of a great deal of chest pain. And we've come to check on him and find he is uh, in fact quite hypotensive with this really, really slow heart rate. Of course, we'd support respiration, check airway breathing, do a complete exam, uh, get our ample and those sorts of things, and, and, and then sort of descend into our ACLS bradycardia algorithm. Now, there is always the option to use drugs with this uh, rhythm. It is a bradycardic rhythm. We could choose to use atropine. This particular patient, it looks to me like he is in a third degree block. So we could still choose to trial atropine, Atropine is quite a bit less likely to work in this sort of rhythm. So I'm gonna decide in consultation with my partners that we are going to pace. So I'm gonna, if I have time, and if the patient's condition allows it, I'm gonna ask my partner to draw up some analgesic. And I am gonna come down to the pacer and all the pacing stuff on the cardiac monitor here is, is nicely placed in this green box. And we just go from top to bottom to, uh, to accomplish it. So we turn the pacer on. 70 beats per minute is, is pretty standard, normal human heartbeat per minute. So most people would probably leave it there. You could change the rate, uh, certainly if you wish to, but we'll perhaps leave it at 70. And you can see what's going on here. Uh, and what can be confusing between this and cardioversion is the machine is also flagging QRSs here. It flags QRSs. In fact, it flags the R wave or tries to both when you're doing synchronized cardioversion or pacing. In synchronized cardioversion, uh, it's, it's basically saying, I'm going to deliver the energy here. This looks like an R wave to me. I'm going to deliver the energy here. In pacing, what it's telling you is I recognize this as the patient's normal intrinsic beat, and I will not pace over that. So this is a demand pacer. So if we set the pacing rate to 70 and the patient's intrinsic rate is 40, the pacer, in theory at least, is going to try uh, and slip in about 30 extra beats per minute there because it's a demand pacer. So what this uh, is telling you is I recognize these as normal beats and we can go ahead with that. So I'm gonna start increasing the current here. So uh, you can see what started to appear now is what we call pacer spikes. So this is an indication that the machine is now delivering energy through the pads into our patient and of course, it's very low now. The patient may feel it, but probably it's obviously it's not at this low level going to actually cause either electrical or mechanical response. So we have to keep uh, going up on the current. And you probably won't see in most patients any likely capture below 40 milliamps, uh, perhaps in a very thin, small, little old lady, uh, you might capture it 40 or 50. Uh, with most of our patients, we're going to have to go up fairly high. And I should say that at this point, your patient will definitely be experiencing uh, some great degree of discomfort and, and certainly pain. Uh, analgesia should be, uh, you know, something we should be doing fairly quickly to try and take away some of that pain. Uh, unlike cardioversion, of course, this pain will go on and on every time the machine fires. So here we are at 70 milliamps and you could see the change, I'll just go down here again for a minute. You could see the change uh, at 60 milliamps. Okay, it's making a liar out of me. Okay, and I suspect this is, this is the machine. This is the arrhythmia generator. Once I hit 70, it just gives me, it trips over to a, uh, to a rhythm that is looking like it's paced. So at, uh, at 60 or 50 milliamps when we were going up, you could see the pacer spike and nothing else. Now you can see the pacer spike and a wide bizarre complex right after it, which is an indication of electrical capture. So at this moment, the, this is when we should be feeling the patient's pulse, probably their femoral pulse, and uh, checking to see for mechanical capture. So if we don't have mechanical capture, uh, we would go up on the current a little bit more um, so I'm try 75, still feeling for that pulse, try 80. Oh, I've got mechanical capture. My partner, my partner, my patient now has a pulse of 
70 a minute and hopefully a fairly fairly strong pulse and hopefully this has raised their blood pressure into a, a more of a normal range. So once I got mechanical capture, I'm going to put it up uh, one more little bit, five or 10 milliamps, just to sort of solidify that capture. And I am done. I have a patient who is now being paced.